Rusty Rose. Never has there been a more poetic harbinger of death in the fairy tale world. The Grand Magic Games tried to imitate him, and Tartaros improved on him, but he's always the best of his kind. No one can compare to the brilliance that is Rusty Rose. Rusty is one of the elite members of the Dark Guild at the top of the Barham Alliance. Grimoire Heart, and is one of their seven kin of Purgatory, a group of wizards seemingly unrivaled in the Barham Alliance. Only below his master Hades and their hired help, Blue Note. The seven kin all have mastery over forbidden magics. Zonkro holds the title of Godslayer. Kane, although a massive idiot, has impressive abilities with voodoo magic. Zoldio possesses the Zodiac Key of Capricorn and has mastered human enslavement magic to use powerful warriors from history to fight for him the same way a celestial spirit would normally fight for their key holder. Melody is able to link herself with anyone and share their strength or even their pain. Ultir has power over all time and Ozma has control over plant life similar in nature to one of the four emperors of Ishgar. But cooler than any of that is the silver-haired creative who can materialize anything he envisions. His magic, the Arc of Embodiment, has the ability to create anything its user can think of. With this power, Rusty Rose is able to create unbeatable weapons, unbreakable shields, sacred guardian beasts to fight for him, pegasus boots to increase his speed, or even recreate his allies. Although not technically living creatures, Rusty's spells have the bonus upside of not being weak to petrification magic from Evergreen, however, possession magic from wizards like Bixlow would still work. Now that you have a general idea of the Silver King of the Underworld, let's look through his personality, history, missions, failures, and character growth. Rusty Rose is as over the top as you can get, with a seeming love of poetry in the dramatic that would put even his copy Rufus lore to shame. Everything Rusty Rose speaks is dramatically enhanced. Tenro Island is referred to as the Garden of Eden, a beautiful battlefield. The Battle of Tenro is a clash of two different ideological sides, the fairies and the demons, of which he is the king of the underworld. Even his Ark of Embodiment creations must have wonderfully crafted names that show off their importance, like the jet black sword that cleaves through all. I am Lord of the Underworld. And my arm is a jet black sword that cleaves through all. And you will pay beyond the darkness! Under the command of Master Hades, the seven kin of Purgatory invade Fairy Tale's sacred land, Tenro Island, during the guild's S Class trials to determine if anyone has the ability to join the ranks of Loxus, Mystigan, Mirajane, Urza, and Guild Arts. Meaning the members on the island are the best Fairy Tale has to offer. The kin are walking into battle against members like Bixlow, Natsu, Juvia, Gajil, and Kana, along with all the other S-Class members mentioned earlier. If that wasn't enough pressure, Dorenbolt, the Magic Council's custody enforcement unit, are also waiting in the wings. Rusty's first opponents are the team of Elfman and Evergreen, who almost fall to the mighty beast Thunderclap. But after tricking it into falling off a cliff, Rusty Rose offers his praise to the lover's duo who staved off his sacred guardian. Attempting to turn the tides, Evergreen uses her petrification magic to turn him to stone, calling him a drama club reject. In a perfect example of Rusty Rose's over-the-top artistic personality, he fakes being affected and screams in horror only to laugh at her childish remark. Turning this drama club reject into a pigeon hurts will be the highlight of my day. No one trash talks fairy tale and lives. No. Drama Club Reject, you say? <laughs> Rusty brags that he possesses magic that is unmatched in power and utility, and unleashes his evil Tower of Dingir on the S-Class hopefuls, blowing them up with an incredible spell as step one to destroying all of Fairy Tail. His next step is to locate Fairy Tail's base on the island and eliminate the injured, but soon after arriving is faced with Panther Lily, Lazana, and Levy. He senses Blue Note's magic power in the distance and refers to him as an annoyance, wondering if he's only taken to the battlefield to steal all of Rusty Rose's glory, although we've yet to see Rusty at his full power. 
Mocking the lack of power those three have to defend their friends, Rusty Rose accepts that this is what fate has in store for him, so even if he'd rather more powerful opponents, he'll be sure to wipe these three first. Mentioning, however, if Fairy Tail is so determined to win that they have the advantage because the most powerful counter to his darkness is the light they claim to wield. Rusty Rose, although powerful, now finds himself in a match against those previous three and the two remaining members of the Thunder Legion. Freed and Bixlow, two wizards that both ironically use dark magic, so Rusty's poem about light's righteous convictions vanquishing the darkness no longer makes any literal sense. Against wizards of his similar caliber being Freed and Bixlow, Rusty Rose realizes what it's like to feel fear. His very being is racked with erratic trembles as he realizes for once he may need to give it his all to survive this fight. But with the terrifying thoughts that come with fear, those nightmares will take form to invoke that feeling in the Thunder Legion. These racing thoughts of fear are like my fuel. They serve to spur my imagination. Go forth, spirits of Phrygia! Die on the souls of fairies! Ignoring the injured members, the Dark Tower of Dingier is unleashed upon his opponents. While enjoying the agony of the fools who dared to stand against him, Rusty Rose is oblivious to the fact Bixlow is using his possession magic to control Elfman to get up while still heavily injured and attack the King of the Underworld from behind. In the end, Rusty Rose was defeated because of his own ego, needing to steal the show and fight on his own, and just like most of the other seven kin of Purgatory, is beaten by a large group of fairy tale wizards who are able to gang up and defeat him together. After the unfortunate battle between Hades and Loxus, Grimoire Hart is forced to retreat, but an unexpected visitor is on the ship with them. Rusty Rose sees as Zareph murders Master Hades and the others of his guild before his eyes, and we're to believe that he kills Rusty in the process. Skip forward seven years, a dark guild comprised of actual demons, not the poetic kind, named Tartaros, have killed or abducted the vast majority of the Barum Alliance members, without Grimoire Heart or the Arashion Sais to keep them in check. Rusty Rose has been traveling the world looking for any members of his guild. In isolation, for all that time, he begins to use his Arc of Embodiment to recreate his friends. One fateful day, he runs into the newly upgraded Crime Sorcier and tells Melody what he's been through. Recreating Zonkro and Azuma, Rusty Rose stormed Tartaros to claim revenge for his guild and hopefully save some of his former guildmates in the process. The verdict is in. You've assaulted our subordinate guilds one by one. You killed most and abducted the rest for Zeroth knows what purpose. This treachery begs vengeance. After a discussion to revive the Barum Alliance, Kyoko, one of the nine demon gates of Tartaros, proceeds to use her curse to amplify Rusty's sense of pain to the point that getting hit in the hand with a pebble causes him to lose focus and his versions of Zonkro and Azuma fade away. Attempting to fight back, Rusty Rose is no match for her, but Kyoka lets him live and tells him to take his imaginary friends and leave. Noticing a figure in the distance, Rusty believes it to be Zareph and screams in terror, remembering what he did to Master Hades. The sight of marred gear sends Rusty into a very non-poetic panic. After telling his woes, Rusty attacks Melody and tries to convince her to join him and rebuild Grimoire Heart, before being struck down by the members who once made up the Arashion Sais. Before leaving, Jalal offers Rusty Rose a spot on Crime Sorcier, leaving him in tears with the thought of finally overcoming his isolation and giving up on Grimoire Heart. But with his parts in Tartaros being anime original, it's unlikely that he'll return to fight alongside Fairy Tail to defeat the Spriggan Twelve, but until the final season ends, I will still hold out hope. After all, this ugly war could use some of his signature poetic beauty. It's rare for a pure villainous character to get so much development without being a hero at some point in their story. For example, just look at other members of the Seven Kin of Purgatory. Wolf here gets most of her development as she joins Crime Sorcier to atone for her sins, and Master Hades has his character development starting as a founding member of Fairy Tail. No matter how cool I think Zonkro is, there's no arguing his lack of importance and depth when compared to Rusty Rose. Who, although having the same enemy as Fairy Tail at that moment, he attacked Tartaros for very selfish reasons. Seven years I wandered! Seven long years! I never gave up on finding you! That hope was the only thing I lived for. 
Rusty Rose is given so much depth without coming from a heroic background or being forced to switch sides. He's allowed to play the villain at all times and look better than his competition while doing it. He's one of the coolest wizards in Fairy Tale, and next to Master Hades is the most deserving of any character for a Why I Love episode. Man, if I love him so much, maybe I should just name my son Rusty Rose. Thanks for watching. Check your screen for the Why I Love playlist and my top 5 favorite villains video. Or check the description for anything you need. Well, peace weebs.